to my channel. I have some goodies in this box. We're gonna unbox this together. Um, they are Australian dendrobium. So in my last video, you can check it out here, I spoke about dendrobium care and how Australian dendrobiums are some of the easier ones to care for. They're really vigorous. They pretty much grow like weeds. They're very temperature tolerant. Um, and my friend Emmanuel down in Florida sent me a box of a few different Kingianums and a Kingianum hybrid. So I'm super excited. So in this video, we're going to unbox these and I'm going to repot them and show you how I acclimate new orchids into my collection. So this is coming from Florida. So it's going to have to get used to my environment here in New York City. So I'm going to share some tips and tricks to get it to successfully grow and bloom here. So let's unbox this. All right. So let's see. So he shipped this on Monday and it got here on Friday. There was a little bit of a delay. I feel like sometimes they tell you a day and they're usually a day late. And it is starting to get really warm here. It's not too humid yet. When it gets humid, it's pretty bad. Um, but it's 85 degrees here today. I can't wait to see these. So let's see. All right. So let's see these orchids this is a really big box oh my goodness all right so we have this dendrobium tingy and i'm right over here it's a nice size we got one two three four five six canes so this will establish really well very nice very nice i think he told me this one is the pink or purple flowers i'll put it down below Let's see what else. Oh, this one is in a pot. Oh, this one has a lot more canes. I was not expecting all of these. I was just expecting one king yanum. So thank you, Emmanuel. Okay. So the next one is the Dendrobium king yanum alba. So this one has white flowers. And wow, this has a lot of canes. This is really established. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven canes. This is a full plant. This is going to bloom very nice he told me that there were some grasshoppers that ate through some of the leaves my cat is always eating through all of my leaves so this is no problem i'm i have even my cat leo orchids they have bite marks in them so i'm gonna keep these away from my cat as they get established so this one is the king Anum alba all right and i'm excited for this last one i was not expecting this you guys will see Oh my gosh, it's a, it's a big one. Okay. So this one, this is a beast over here. So this one is the Kingianum crystal. So from what I saw, it is the Kingianum crossed with the Speciosum. Speciosa, I'll put it down below. But this one is a taller hybrid of the Kingianum. And I was telling Emmanuel that um, I have a Kingianum. It was labeled as a Kingianum. I got it as a keiki. And when the flowers bloomed, it was not a Kingianum. A lot of people told me it was a Dendrobium Berryota, or maybe it was the Dendrobium Delicatum. To this day, I don't think I'll know what, those, what that orchid is. I'll put the flowers for you guys. Let me know down below. Um, but I don't have a true Kingianum. I have a Dendrobium um, Jonathan's Glory Dark Joy that I got from Paula. And that one I'm waiting to bloom. I really love those. But now I have these lovely vigorous species and this hybrid over here. I find them so easy. Um, I love these orchids. They're fragrant. They grow so easily and they're not very fussy at all. So I'm going to get them potted up and I'm also going to share how I go about taking care of them. So let's jump right in. Okay. Okay. So the first thing that we got to do is treat these. So I have everything indoors and everything grows really closely together. These are coming from outside and they look really good, but just in case, anytime I bring a new orchid into my collection, I like to spray them down with a systemic insecticide just as a preventative, just because I immediately introduce them to my collection. So I'm gonna spray everything down right now with um, Naturalite. I have that link down below. And then we're gonna go about repotting these. I'm making such 
Okay, I have my systemic insecticide right here, and I just used it to treat some other orchids earlier, so I'm just gonna spray it. I'm gonna drench, I'm gonna drench these orchids down, and then they'll be ready for um, being introduced to my collection. Because these orchids are um, divisions and they have to get established, I'm gonna leave the root systems alone and I'm gonna pop them up as is. So I'm gonna put them in fresh moss and bark. I'm gonna use a little bit of moss, heavier on the bark, and we're gonna put them in these pots. I wish I had more clay pots since they're heavier on the bottom. And these are kind of tall, so this prevents them from tipping over, but I ran out. So I'm going to use this, but put it in a decorative heavy pot and this one as well. So we'll get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clear a little bit of this moss in here, just a little bit. I don't want to ruin these roots up here, but I'm not too concerned. I just, I just don't want to ruin anything in here because this is going to take a little bit to establish. This is vigorous, but I want to be very mindful that the roots can be sensitive. So I'm going to take this off. I'll leave some in. I'm not too concerned if I leave some in, but I want to be very careful with these roots. Okay. Yeah, I just want to be careful. Oh, that is a truck outside. All right. That is a loud truck on Broadway. All right. Let's see. I think this is good enough. Yeah, I don't want to ruin anything in there. I think that's enough. Like, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to rinse some water through it. And I got some of the moss out. I like to be more conservative with um, some of my um, new division orchids just because they do need some time to acclimate. So I'm gonna put in this pot here. We're gonna put some moss on the bottom. Then we're gonna put some bark over that. Okay, so we have moss, we have bark. I'm gonna put this orchid in here and then we're gonna surround it with some more bark. And a reason for not getting rid of too many things in there is that I want something to anchor this orchid into the pot. We add a little bit more moss, not too much here. Just a little bit. This keeps in a little bit more moisture. And we're gonna top it off with more bark. I'm gonna add a support stake right in here to keep this from wobbling. Let's see. Should have put it in here before I put the orchid in, but it's okay. Just add it to the corner here, perfect. And then we'll add this here. This will stay in place and look, we have a spike in here. This one is looking good. Okay, this next one, we're gonna put it in here. Let's see. I'm gonna get this moss off. I wanna be really careful though. I don't wanna disturb the roots too much. I'm gonna clean my sink out after. I'm just gonna be really careful. Look at this root system, it's so nice. There's a lot going on in here. We have a new growth coming in right there. This is a really, really healthy orchid. I'm gonna leave most of this in, honestly. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave most of this in. I don't wanna disturb this too much. Yeah, with divisions, I'm really careful. I'm more conservative. I'm not trying to like cut anything, break anything too much. I, I pretty much leave things until they're established. Then I can repot and trim a lot of roots and stuff. But the biggest thing is that we need them to acclimate to our new environments. So it takes time.
Okay, that's enough for me. We got a lot out. So I'm gonna put some moss here, some bark, and then we're gonna put the root ball in here. This is gonna fill up in no time, I just know it. I wish I had more clay pots. I'm a little sad I ran out, otherwise this all would have gone into a clay pot. All I have really are plastic pots. The moss helps keep a little moisture in there. I don't put too much. It's mostly bark, but clay pots do tend to dry out pretty quickly. So I do add it as an amendment on the bottom and towards the middle and top. Then we top it all off with bark. And this one will not need a support stake because it is a really nice root system. And you'll notice that I positioned it so the oldest growths are facing back here. The newest growth is gonna have more room on that side. So that's that. This is all set. I actually found one more clay pot. So perfect. So we're gonna put this um, King Anum Crystal in here. So we have a cakey. I may pop this separately and give this away. Um, but we're gonna put this, which also includes a massive plant right over here. I'm just gonna put it all together. It's bare root. So we're just gonna throw it in here. I'm gonna add some moss, some bark. We may need a support stake for this. So I'm gonna th put this in here with a support stake. Let me grab one. We're going to put this all together. I can remove this, but I think I'm going to leave it for now. So I could take this off if I wanted. Um, I'm going to let it adapt a little bit and then I'll take it off. So I have my moss in the bottom and some bark. We're gonna surround it with some bark. We have the support stake right over here. I'm excited to see this one. They're all fragrant. I hear such good things. Let me take this out. Let me elevate it a little bit. There we go. I put it in too deep, so I'm elevating it just a tiny bit. I don't want it in too deep. We're going to add some more. The older growth is towards the back. We'll see how it goes. This will be a nice tight growth pattern, though. I'm raising it a little bit more. I'm putting some more media on the bottom. I think this is good. It's a delicate balance between putting it in too deep and making sure that it has support. You don't want to go in too deep or else it could rot the orchid. I think this is good now. There we go. Okay, that's it. We're all set here. I'm surrounded by dendrobium. So this one is the Kingianum. It is all set. I'm gonna put it in a pot that's a little bit heavier to keep it um, from toppling over. And I think this will do just fine. I'm so excited to get it to bloom. It should happen in no time. These are so vigorous, but I cannot wait. The next one is the Alba, the Kingianum Alba, which I put in this clay pot right here. So this one is all set. I don't think any issues with this either. I think it should acclimate really well. The root system was beautiful. I kept a little bit of the moss in there, but I didn't want to disturb those beautiful roots too much. And that's fine. I, over time, as you're growing more and more, you're a little bit less meticulous with your repots. Trust me on that. So this one has a new growth coming in. It should adapt really quickly. 
And then we have the big one, the Kingianum crystal, which I believe is the cross between the Kingianum and the Speciosum. This is the biggest one of the group. Now I'm thinking about removing this cakey. I had, um, I was gonna leave it and let it acclimate, but by acclimating, I'm realizing it's coming from Florida. So it's way more humid in Florida than it is here. Right now it's 61% humidity. I'm looking at my meter by my window. So it's not bad, but there's days where it's gonna be 30. Um, and until we hit the summer, summer, it's gonna be up and down. So these roots might dry off. So I'm thinking of just removing this cakey right now and just potting it up just to give it moisture right off the bat. Um, and it should be good. So I'm gonna put this in some moss and bark, pot it up separately. And now we have an additional plant it was very easy to remove, as you saw. I just took it off the cane. You just twist it a little bit. So I'm gonna put this in a separate little pot and I'm gonna put it with the other cakey. And now we have extras, but I'm so happy to grow these. Emmanuel, thank you so much. I just love the King Annum hybrids. They smell so good. I find them so vigorous. They're so temperature tolerant, really hot, really cold. It doesn't matter. Um, they're a little bit less fussy than the den fowls. Den fowls like it really, really hot. And they don't need that cool, dry period that the um, Dendrobium nobilis need. So these are all good to go. Um, now as I'm acclimating them into my environment, I'm not going to fertilize them for a couple of weeks because we want to make sure it starts pushing new roots. We need to get them acclimated. So I'm going to just water them with water, let them dry fully, and then water again in about a week. And then maybe in about a month, I'll start fertilizing. I'm going to look for signs that new roots are pushing through. With the um, Alba, with the, that root system, I have no doubt that's going to happen immediately. With these others, I'm sure it's going to happen very quickly, but I have to look at the pot and see if I see any roots poking through. And then that's when I'll know. Um, and you can kind of get a sense for it as well as you're, you're poking through and you're watering. You can see if it's establishing, if it's still wobbling in the pot a little bit. Um, but that's pretty much the care. Um, whenever I introduce anything into my collection, I treat, treat them just because they go immediately with the rest of my plants. I, um, if they're divisions, I repot them. I put them in my preferred setup, which is uh, bark and moss these days. And um, yeah, we'll let them be for a while, just give them water. And in a couple of months, I'm sure I'll have some bloom. Thank you, Emmanuel, for sending me these orchids. I love them. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.